Okay, let's do a sound check. One, two, three, four, five. Good morning. I'm Trixie Angeles and I am uh, for for Facebook, for Luminous on Facebook. Uh, wanted to discuss kasi marami pong tanong tungkol doon sa uh, NFA. Uh, as you know, uh, ang, ang latest development ay nag-order na ang ating Pangulo na mag-import ang National Food Authority ng bigas para ma-replenish yung rice stocks ng NFA. Explain lang po natin ang, ang role ng NFA. Ang NFA po ay uh, ang agency na nag ng tinatawag nating food security. Although limited siya doon sa... Salamat po. Uh, limited po siya doon sa bigas. Uh, bakit? Kasi ang bigas po ay very sensitive doon sa, ano, sa socially sensitive na tinatawag natin. Uh, anong ibig sabihin nito? It means na maraming masyadong naaapektuhan uh, kapag on policy. So, yung supply niya affects a lot of people at saka pati yung presyo niya nakaka-apekto din. So, for instance, uh, ito, uh, already, uh, we've already done the research sa NFA at maliwanag na even a 4 peso increase in the price of rice can affect already millions of people. Pag sinabi natin millions of people, ibig sabihin natin dito gutumin yung mga million na yon. And uh, especially pagka uh, dun sa current market participation ng NFA, uh, between 2 to 6 percent of the total population are affected by rice price increases. Anong ibig sabihin din ito? Ibig sabihin, this translates to about 10 million people na hindi makakabili ng bigas kapag nag-continue yung rate ng price increases ng, ng NFA rice. Ang NFA rice kasi siya yung bottom, yan yung pinakamura na bigas na ginagawang available. Um, so, nung nag-issue ng alarm ang NFA administration, babag, uh, ano natin, differentiate natin ha, kasi minsan sinasabi natin na madali kasi gumawa ng, ng what we call sweeping generalizations about certain government agencies. Kunwari sasabihin natin, eh kasi corrupt yung ganitong ahensya. The NFA has two components. Uh, the the council, the National Food Authority Council, yun yung board na gumagawa ng polisiya. Tapos, uh, yung second is yung secretariat headed by the NFA administrator. The NFA administrator is Jason Aquino. Uh, si Jason Aquino, yung NFA administrator, siya po yung nag-issue ng alarm tungkol dun sa lowest, lowest uh, rice stocks ng NFA for the first time in 10 years umabot dun sa point na 2 days na lang ang supply ng NFA rice. Uh, bakit alarming ito? Kasi um, kapag tumaas ang presyo ng bigas na sobrang taas, marami na pong magugutom as we had noted earlier. Normally, hindi yan problema during this period na rice harvest. Pag rice harvest kasi, di ba, maraming um, bigas na nasa market. And usually, pag maraming bigas, pumababa ang presyo ng bigas. So, NFA kasi ang nakatutok yan sa consumers. It makes sure na available ang bigas para sa mga consumers. But at the same time, one of the collateral concerns of NFA is the farmers. So, thank you dun sa lahat na nagsasabing ang ganda ng here. <laughs> Ibig sabihin, sulit yung bayad. Anyway, Dun sa, sa pagdating po dun sa food, kasi food security ang mandato ng NFA, kailangan po mag-import na para ma-replenish ang rice stocks. Ngayon, bakit importation? Unang-una, ang price control ng NFA, it cannot just buy rice locally kasi kapag uh, we don't want to take advantage, NFA doesn't want to take advantage of the farmers. So at 17 pesos na allowable, bumili ng palay ang NFA. NFA kasi yung nagmimil ng sarili nilang palay eh. So, 17 pesos lang ang allowable price na pwedeng gastusin ng NFA. So, dahil mas efficient ang mga uh, ibang bansa, bibili sila, mag import sila in a government-to-government -government importation. Hindi yan subject to corruption kasi nga, ang NFA nga ang nagbibigay ng permits to private uh, importations. When it is government-to-government, -government, transparent po yan. Very clear kung magkano, kung ano yung sourcing, etc. And all of the agreements are subject to FOI. Now, bakit government to government? Kasi pag government to government, and NFA lang ang naggagawa nito, lahat ng bigas ay papasok po 
doon sa warehouses ng NFA, hindi po yan ibebenta sa merkado. So, hindi ma-affect pa muna ang prices ng bigas, especially now na harvest season and we want our farmers to get the best price for their rice. Bakit ako nagpapaulit-ulit about NFA? Kasi tinitignan ko po yung comments doon sa wall about uh, NFA at marami pong, ano, marami pong misconceptions. Halimbawa, uh, may mga nagsasabi na um, uh, kasalanan kasi ng NFA yan. Uh, that's not true. Kasi ang NFA talaga, it's, it's not out to make money. Ang purpose alone ng NFA is to stabilize rice prices. Ang welfare nga ng farmers is not even an NFA concern, although collaterally, ginagawa natin yon, Ginagawa ng NFA yon, na to also consider the rice farmers. Pero ang primary na mandato na nagbabantay dun sa welfare ng mga rice farmers is the Department of Agriculture. Uh, sabi ni Ariel Anino, Anong reaction yun na i-file ni Attorney Jude Sabio at Senator Trilliano sa International Court? Ah, sige, we'll talk about that after this. Kung wala nang tanong about NFA, we can go to the ICC proceedings. Um, pero daanan lang natin na mabilis na mabilis yung impeachment ni CJ si Sereno. So, lalabas ngayon, um, for, I understand na itatalakayan ng impeachment ng Justice Committee ng House yung tungkol doon sa result na kasama ng ilaw dito no so nandito ako sa studio eh nasa karambola room ng DWIZ so uh, according to uh, uh, i-discuss po ang psychological exam uh, ni Chief Justice Sereno na isunumiti at the time na nag-apply siya as associate justice uh, at binigay po ito uh, at at uh, Itong psychiatric exam po ay standard po for all our justices. Kasi mahirap rin naman po talaga na magkaroon ng somebody in a position of power making decisions na, na questionable yung mental competence. So yun yung in, ano, uh, ini-evaluate po ng ating mga psychiatrists kapag merong uh, candidate for the bench. So in this case, uh, at the time, candidate si, si Madam... Uh, uh, Sereno, and uh, nagkaroon ng, ng psychiatric exam. Uh, marami pong rumors about it, pero lalabas na, eventually lalabas po to. So we got the information that out of a grade of 5, 1 being the highest, her grade was a 4.2. Uh, 3 being the supposedly passing grade, meaning there's the minimum level of mental competence is set at a grade of 3. So, ang sinasabi ng spokesman ni Chief Justice Sereno is that not uh, having a grade of uh, a failing grade in the psychiatric exam is not an impeachable offense. And uh, in that sense, in the strictest sense, tama po sila. It is not an impeachable offense. But this goes into the qualifications for Madam Sereno to occupy the position, not just of Chief Justice, but of Justice of the Supreme Court. Oo, mukha akong puyat. Kasi puyat talaga ako. Ang daming trabaho. Okay. So, um, so magiging issue po ito talaga uh, in an impeachment proceeding, not, not, as a, uh, not as a fault, so to speak, not as a transgression that is impeachable, pero to show whether or not this person is competent to continue holding the office. So, yun yung ano, so ikinaklarify lang natin na it doesn't necessarily have to be a wrong uh, to, to not pass your psychiatric exam, but it tells us of the qualifications of this person to hold office. Diba? Um, so, so, in this case, it is, it is vitally important to discuss the competence of this person as long as it is in conjunction with the impeachment complaints, with the other complaints. Halimbawa, if the uh, qualification, if the, the psychiatric examination indicates a highly emotional nature and uh, an incapacity to make objective decisions, then makikita na natin in what light the other decisions that she has penned as ponentia or her, her management of the Supreme Court's uh, uh, administration is has been affected by the psychological profile, by the psychiatric profile. Ibig sabihin, yung pagmamanage niya nitong Korte Suprema, including yung pagka, uh, ano, 
pag-handle niya halimbawa ng mga decisions that should be en banc, yung capacity niya to work with other justices are, are, are symptomatic of this psychological profile that was created. So makikita natin that itong psychiatric uh, exam niya or psychological exam niya will indicate not just the why of, of the commission of these offenses that are impeachable, but will also underscore that this is in fact what happens when your psychological profile is like this. Uh, sabi ni Neil, mahirap magkaroon ng doktrin na judge. In this case, justice po. Ang tawag pagka nasa Court of Appeals at saka Supreme Court, justices po yan. Lower than that, they're called judges. Uh, Sabi ni Alan Cruz, pwede ka magkaloon na 17 pesos minimum price ng palay. It is a law. Actually, it was set by the LEDAC. Uh, sabi ni Brendo, mapalin lang ka kanina sa tarambola. Paano naman? Sabi ni Neil de la Cruz, it's not impeachable but it applies to the fact that she should not have been given the position to hold office. That is correct. Uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, sabi ni Ariel Anino, may tanong siya tungkol kay BBM. Kailan daw ulit after the recount ni BBM? Pati mga mag, marali naman ngayong Pebrero 23 hanggang sa Pebrero 25, linggo po sa People Power Anniversary, konta sa administration naman. Okay. So, sabi ni Kilan, you can discuss PBM poll protest and the postponement for the end time of the manual recount. What may remedy can we use kay Justice Kagiwa? Okay, ang nakikita ko pa lang so far na remedy is either ipa-inhibit siya, which means natatagal na naman siya, o ipa-impeach siya, in which case it will not affect the, yung takbo ng kaso. Sabi ni Luchi, is attorney tricks, isang damakmak na yung kapal pa kanya sa office niya. If we're talking about Chief Justice Sereno, uh, at least based on the impeachment complaint, yeah, that, that seems to have some support. Uh, sabi ni R.C. Terte, is it legal or what part of our law for an electoral protest by BBM for the people in charge for the recount to undergo psychological? There's no evidentiary or factual support to justify a psychological exam for people who are conducting a manual recount. It's never been done before and we don't see the requirement for it right now. Hindi, ano, but let's, let's look at the, ano, the resolution that the Justice Kaugiwa will be issuing pursuant to this. Okay. Dun sa ICC naman, um, nagbigay po ng notice dito sa, sa Philippine government ang, ang ICC na they will now begin open the examination of documents or the examination of the complaint that was filed against PRRD allegedly for crimes against humanity uh, involving the war on drugs. Okay, uh, allegedly marami nga daw napapatay and so ito yung sinasabi nilang crimes against humanity. Mm. Well, ang sinasabi lang, ano, and, and nag-issue na po, to be fair, kay uh, Spokes Harry Locke, nag-issue na po siya ng clarification na uh, hindi po ito opening of an investigation, pero opening lang po ito ng complaint, titignan lang po yung complaint kung uh, papasok sa jurisdictional requirements, factual requirements, etc. So, in effect, uh, ini-inform lang na ang Philippine government ng ICC na okay, may natanggap po ng complaint at titignan po namin ito kung sufficient ito. It is, doesn't mean na bukas na po yung investigation, it doesn't mean that there's already a case, it only means na o oh, may natanggap sila, ngayon pa lang nila babasahin. However, pinopoint out ni SAS, and I'd like to point out also that SAS is the expert on this, or at least one of the experts here uh, on social media on this, is that yung... Uh, presidente ng Mexico na ay naging subject din ng isang reklamo at more than a year later, wala pa rin kahit opening ng investigation or opening ng documents or opening of the examination of documents dito. So, uh, nakita din natin na uh, although it is nothing yet to be worried about, parang mabilis ang takbo ng reklamo dito laban sa ating Pangulo. So, we do have to be ready for for something like this. Uh, right now, hindi pa siya ganun ka, ano, no, ka, ka worrisome, pero we do have to consider it. Kahit paano. Uh, so, um, 
Do I agree with the complaint? I disagree that the complaint has any basis. Kasi unang-una, uh, one of the means, one of the reasons why an international organization katulad ng ICC ay maaaring makialam sa isang bansa ay kailangan may showing na may reason silang makialam dun sa sovereignty kasi interference ito in the so- with a sovereign nation. Kung hindi ina-address ng Pilipinas itong issue na ito, then, ma- then magkakaroon ng-, ng basis ang ICC na makialam. Ito yung problema ngayon ng reklamo. May existent na kaso sa Korte Suprema regarding the war on drugs. Diba na ang abogado dito, ang nag-file po nito ay si Attorney Jokno, si Chel Jokno na dean ng College of Law ng Lasalle University. So, habang po may mga existent na case, but I understand this is just one, I think there are two cases na nasa Korte Suprema regarding the war on drugs. So nakikita natin na hmm, medyo malabo po magkaroon ng basehan ang um, ICC na makialam kasi ina-address naman po yung alleged uh, uh, killings na supposedly pursuant to the war on drugs. Uh, sabi ni Ana, sino po ang nag-initiate para mabuhay ang ICC juvenis na yan? Well, si SAS has a theory na with the presence of Justice Raul Pangalangan or Judge Raul Pangalangan in the ICC, it's possible na merong uh, some kind of influence going on. In yung theory ni SAS. I, I think it's a sound theory, but let's see what's going on. Sabi ni Christine Hermosura, but hindi nagkaroon ng psychological testing sa presidente? Pwede bang ito after? I know who you're thinking of. <laughs> Tapos, sabi ni Albert Alfonso, good morning, ano nang ginagawa ng government natin para protektahan na si Duterte sa ICC? Well, we don't have to do anything kasi eh. Like, for instance, the, the legal processes are in place. Kung merong mga reklamo about EJKs, at ito yung problema natin dun sa mga drum beaters ng EJK, no? Kasi they keep harping na may EJK, may EJK. Pero recently lang po, nag-file ng kaso sa, sa, sa Korte Suprema. And I think, hindi kasi magkakatono yung mga tumututo dito sa War on Drugs. Uh, first of all, dun sa mga nagsasabing may EJK, if they submitted it to the Supreme Court for, for you know, to be addressed, as an issue to be addressed, then uh, clearly there would have been no basis dun sa ICC. Kaya nakikita natin na ang tagal-tagal-tagal-tagal nang nire-reklamo itong EJKs na to, pero recently lang nag-file ng kaso sa Korte Suprema. Uh, sabi ni Hermes Hernale, bakit di binabalita yung KBBM? Ano na po ang latest about the electoral protest? Uh, ang latest po nga about the electoral protest is allegedly si Madam Lenny ay nag-submit daw po ng motion doon sa, sa Supreme Court saying na i-abandon na lahat ng mga pending motions. So, Ah, ganito po yung nangyari. Hinamon po ni Senator Bongbong si Vice President Lenny at sinabihan siya na, o oh, sige, abandon na na, mag-file tayo ng manifestation sa, sa uh, Presidential Electoral Tribunal na inaabandon na na natin lahat ng mga pending motions natin at magbukasan na tayo ng ballot boxes. Pumirma ka agad si Senator Bongbong. Nung umabot itong uh, manifestation doon sa kampo ni Madam Lenny, ang lumabas po ay si Attorney Ma, kasi Attorney Makalintal at nagsasabing mali naman yung final mo eh, manifestation to. If you're asking something from a court or anything like that, you have to file a motion. Actually, medyo hindi po completely honest yung statement ni Attorney Ma kasi po, uh, ang sinasabi ni Senator BBM is that kaya hindi nga nag-file ng motion is because a motion will uh, require an action from the court nagagawan pa ng decision and therefore magtatagal na naman yung issue na yon with the court. So, with the, with the Presidential Electoral Tribunal. That's why manifestation po yung fina-file nila o yung gustong i-file ni Senator Bombo. So, si uh, Attorney Mack naman has converted their, their so-called manifestation and filed a motion. So, ibig sabihin, the court or the PET is going to take some time again to to talk about, to, to 
to decide on that motion. Eh, yun yung sinasabi ni BBM, huwag mo na natin pa decide din yung pet kasi it will take time. Kung bukasan ng ballot boxes, bukas na tayo ngayon. Ang sinasabi naman ni Attorney Mac, no, this has to be in a motion, we have to submit it, ano ganyan. So, tignan po natin kung ano mangyayari. Eh, today, meron pong pasabog sa karambola at in-announce na um, meron ngang lalabas na psychological testing requirement. May decision daw si Justice Kagiwa supposedly na lalabas soon na mag require ng psychological testing para dun sa lahat na mag-handle ng balota. Wala nga po tayong nakikitang legal basis nito but of course we have to see the decision. Gayun pa man, I've never heard of any uh, decision like this that requires a psychological test for people who will be opening ballots. Maintindihan ko kung may psychological test for candidates uh, or even Supreme Court justices. Pero yung tagabukas lang ng, ano, ng ballot boxes, medyo, this might smack of another delay. Or at the very least, yun ang po ang nakikita ng, ano, ng, ng kampo ni Senator Bombong nakikita nila that this might be another delaying tactic. Well, at least we we presume that they will see this as another delaying tactic. Uh, sabi ni Susan Sinreda Ramos, yan na naman ang pagtakip nila sa dengue. Ay, hindi naman po lahat ay pagtakip sa dengue, ano? Kasi itong ICC case, final na yan last year pa. Iba po yung punteria dito. Remember that yung mga enemies ng ating Pangulo are hell-bent on getting him out of office. So, ang tingin ko, hindi ito um, panglihis sa atensyon sa Dengbak siya, but another means of trying to get the President out of office. Kasi nakikita nila, yung Dengbak siya rin is, uh, is an attack on the former President. At itong Dengbak siya scandal po na ito, ay maaari mag-finally mag-deliver ng kaso that can get Noynoy Aquino in jail. Mm. Sabi ni uh, Con- uh, Sheila Criste, nakakaawa po ang bayan natin na magkaroon tayo ng CG na may psychological problem or may sayad, kaya dapat na lang pumaalis siya. Hashtag remove sereno. Good point. Sabi ni Conchita Polidario Abitona, at turn yan po latest kay Trillanes, bakit tagal ng ethics committee? Well, sa so February 20, sabi ni Senator Soto, magkakaroon. Ididinggin daw po ang... Nakaschedule po dinggin yung, here, yung ethics case ni Senator Trillanes at consequently, yung kinaso ni Senator Trillanes dito kay Senator Gordon ay didinggin din at the same time. Sabi ni Neil de la Cruz, wala naman kasi silang maipoprovide na valid legitimate proof. Alin yung fabricated nyo? Yung fabricated nilang 13,000. They have nothing to show for it. O bukod pa doon, they have to show not only the actual deaths, but the government policy regarding those deaths. Diba? That this was uh, a policy that was ordered by the President pursuant to the war on drugs. Eh, doon sa mga yun, we have to determine pa nga kung ano yung reasons para doon sa pagkamatay ng iba. Ang taas po ng unresolved crime, particularly sa homicides dito sa ating PNP. So without the proof na merong government policy, merong nagutos na patayin itong mga to pursuant to the war on drugs, at ang dami niya na, ang dami yung papatunayan, then there is no case to bring to the ICC. Uh, Sabi ni Nita Haley, tama, ginagawa na namang issue ng dilawa ng EJK sa ICC dahil nalalapit na naman ang EDSA fake revolt. Sabi ni John Su, why can't we withdraw from membership in the ICC? The EU isn't even a member. Uh, ako, I agree. There's no reason why we don't withdraw. As a matter of fact, nung panahon ni GMA, uh, si Arab kasi signed the original agreement na maging party tayo to the ICC. Uh, nagka-revolusyon and naging presidente si si GMA at hinabol yun with drawing signature natin. Nung naging presidente si Noynoy, uh, we entered or re-entered or affirmed our participation in the ICC. So if we can enter, then we can also withdraw. So, sabi ni Naomi Shijino, as I know, pala din pumupunta si Tuliana sa US, today nasa New York siya. Wow, so you're daming pera, ha? Sabi ni Amanda Polinario, kung mapatunayan po na walang basihan ng kaso against PRRD, ano po ang pwedeng gawin kay Trillanes? We don't, wala po. Um, 
we have cases, uh, we have a, a, an offense called malicious prosecution, but there is nothing wrong with filing cases um, unless you lie. So, uh, perjury, kung merong perjury. But if not, then there's no case against them. Kasi, you don't want people to be afraid of filing cases. Yun yung policy po doon. Sabi ni R.C. Terte, can we file a case in the ICC versus Pinoy in Crimes Against Humanity about his negligence on the Mbapsha issue? Not yet. We have to address it locally first. Kailangan mapatunayan natin na hindi umubra yung local na system natin of justice before we ask for help from an outside source. So sabi ni Liz Lisa, attorney yung pumalit kay Miriam Santiago, taga-inquirer eh, isa siya sa mga taga-ICC. Raul Pangalangan. As a matter of fact, he was my professor in international law. Mm, sabi ni Jane Maria Torres, realistically, the drug war is a bloody one. We're dealing with crazy people who would kill to satisfy their drug cravings. Impossible naman na walang mamatay o masakta na madamay. That's true, but nobody is saying that there can be no deaths in the drug war. Uh, when you say EJK, there has to be a government policy pursuant to the killings. Uh, Sabi ni Maricar, share this live video. O nga pala, dun sa mga hindi pa nag-share, pakishare naman po dyan. Dun sa hindi pa nagla-like or follow, please like or follow Luminous by Trixie Cruz Angeles on Facebook. Um, sabi ni... Uh, ano ba? Ni Neil De La Cruz, expert sila sa dilatory tactics. I'm assuming that you're talking about the BBM case. Yeah, that's medyo crazy na yung mga, ano eh, yung mga delays. Sabi ni Elijah Ezekiel. <laughs> Nuga naman ako looking yan. Oo nga, pero looking lang yan. It's the hell. Sabi ni Tonyo, Panagao, haya ng ICC ang gusto nila mag-civil war para legal na papatay ng senador sa congressman para unahin na lang sa... Wala naman pong ganyanan. Sabi ni... Um... Albert Alfonso, di po pwede magreklamo sa Supreme Court si BBM dahil sa delay ng opening. Ang Presidential Electoral Tribunal po ay Supreme Court. Sabi ni Vic de la Cruz, ano pong balita sa kaso ni Andy Bautista? Well, naibalita ko na po yan dito sa, ano, sa, sa, sa karambola din and uh, dito sa Facebook but uh, ulitin natin. Um, ang sinasa, nung turnover, kasi di ba nag-file ng kaso, si Andy Bautista against Tisha Bautista, the NBI, the DOJ, and the lawyers of Tisha Bautista. At sinasabi nila na i-turn over lahat ng documents na nakuha ni Tisha dun sa private files ni Andres Bautista citing a violation of his privacy. nag yung court na, o oh, sige, turn over nga, meron nga violation of privacy, but Tisha is allowed to make certified two copies of all the documents. So pumayag si Tisha, pumayag yung lawyers, o oh, sige, so nag-turn over na. Alam mo kung bakit sila pumayag? Pumayag sila because the demand to return these documents means that you agree that you own these documents. And you agree that you own these documents and uh, to some degree, you warrant their their authenticity. Or if you don't warrant their authenticity, then you are in, um, in possession of uh, fake documents. Ang sinasabi ngayon ng during the turnover, hindi dumating si Andy Bautista at uh, ayon dun sa sources natin dun sa, sa, sa hukuman uh, or dun sa, sa, sa venue at the time of the turnover, sinasabi ng mga abogado ni, ano, ni, ni Andy Bautista that, o oh, sige, we're accepting this, but, pero hindi ibig sabihin no, na totoo yung mga documents na ito. So, why? why? Why did you demand them in the first place? Uh, ang tingin natin dito, dalawa. Unang-una is that they want to be able to contest these documents are not real. Okay? Pero, para hindi si Andy yung masabit, ang sasabihin nila, we want to contest that these documents are not real, pero si Tisha yung nag, na, nag-manufacture nitong mga to. Kasi kung si Tisha ang nag-manufacture na ito, you don't have the right to get them back because they are not yours. So, yun yung nakakapagtaka dun sa position ng uh, lawyers ni Andres Bautista. So, sabi ni Susan Sengreda Ramos, aling Lugos Camp will do anything to delay the processes, psychological test para mabukas, delay the processes para mabukas yung ballots na ballot, tawagin si Sereno. Sabi ni Irwin Sino, anong timeline ng impeachment ni si J. Sereno kailan naabot si Senate? Well, supposedly it should be decided within 60 days. 
Pero right now, the delay works in favor of those who want her impeachment. Kasi nire-resolve pa natin, tinitignan pa natin kung ano yung numbers natin sa Senado. Remember, she can be impeached. Impeachment is what happens in the House. But removal is another thing. That's what happens in the Senate. So titignan natin if we have the numbers in the Senate. Arlene Abrenica, kilala mo pala si Atty. Ahmed? Hindi ko, who's Atty. Ahmed? Baka Atty. Ahmed. Uh, sabi ni Lisa Valdez, di ba crime against humanity max that mass vaccination ng Deng Vaxia? Marami po tayong kailangan patunayan para maging crime against humanity yan. Kailangan, uh, there was an intent to kill. Pero, like I said, it has to be addressed locally first. Kailangan i-exhaust uh, natin lahat ng Uh, remedies natin locally before we can go to an international court. Sabi ni Albert Alfonso, di ba pwedeng magreklamo mismo sa Supreme Court ang delaying tactic ni Lenny sa opening ng ballot boxes, huwag sa PET. But the PET is the Supreme Court. Uh, the PET is the Supreme Court sitting as the Presidential Electoral Tribunal. It's just a different hat. It's the same body. Sabi ni Ramil, would the current case versus Duterte prevent the PRRD from filing a case against Pinoy and Dengvaxia? Like I said, that isn't the problem. The problem isn't what is, uh, whether or not we can file a case. The problem is whether or not we have basis. First, you have to exhaust local remedies. Uh, sabi ni Ann Toting, wala bang magagawa tungkol sa pagdidelay ng pet recount? I think the lawyers of BBM are doing everything that they can. Within the legal parameters, so tingin ko, uh, apart from impeaching Justice Kagiwa, wala po. Uh, sabi ni Naomi Chujino, parang alarming na ang ginagawa ng mga yalo gamit ang mga studyante at maraming nagkuprotesta, ganyan din ang ginagawa nila sa mga Marcoses. Yeah. Sabi ni George Sikenya, favorite month ng yellow February, daming ganap. Totoo. Sabi ni Susie Descargar, nagpapahalata si Kagiwa attorney na i-delay uli para makapaghanda sila ng kung ano man milagro ang gagawin sa kung bilaw. Recount, recount. Hashtag recount, ASAP. Para tapos agad. Agree. Sabi ni Rose, ginagawa ba nila ang pangbulaw upang ilay yung issue sa Deng Baksha? Hindi. Yung pangbulaw is to remove the president. Sabi ni Neil de la Cruz, grabe panahon ngayon, nagkakabukingan na marami may sayad in all levels. May naging presidente may sayad, ngayon may justice na may sayad, appointed na kung may sayad na presidente, tapos meron ding senators na may sayad na halatang ang bubo. Well, I wouldn't say that some senators are stupid, I would actually say that they have self-interests na pinaprotektahan. Sabi ni Edwin Ocampo, why is there so many unresolved crimes in our country? Um, that will go into the capacity of the PNP to do that. Pero it would also go into the kind of crimes that are being committed. Halimbawa, how do you solve, you need to um, come up with better measures in solving crimes such as mga drive-by killings. So I think, uh, siguro, one of those things is that kulang yung CCTVs, kulang yung... Yung, yung technology because uh, most crimes have to be addressed with a technological solution and good old-fashioned uh, ability of our criminal investigation and detection group. Sabi ni Rona Sir naman, shout out po sa Roman Catholic Church na ilagay nila yung picture ng mga bata na namatay sa Deng Vaxia. I think that we should all ask our parish priests to do that. Uh... Sabi ni Aida, I'm sorry, I'm worried about the ICC case against PRRD. Well, the strongest defense against a case like that is for us to address it at this level, which is why, importante sa atin, and we have to remember this, if you think that some police officers are involved in drugs or involved in the killing of anybody, file cases against those police officers, which means na ina-address ng ating gobyerno because the judiciary is part of the government. Ibig sabihin kapag pumwasok ang mga kaso, pag kinakasuhan natin yung mga taong pumapatay sa ibang mga tao, whether or not durugista yan or pusher yan or any sort of criminal yan, we should file cases against anybody who kills. 
or anybody who can commit a crime. That way, masasabi natin na ina-address ng ating gobyerno parate ang mga issues sa mga killings na to. And if we are addressing it, it means there is no government policy to kill these people. Uh, okay. So last two questions po kasi ang daming lakad for today. Uh, sabi ni Albert Alfonso, ma'am, pag nag natagal nila si Duterte natanggal nila si Duterte asahan niyo may civil war lalo na sa Mindanao well I don't want that to happen that is why importante yung participation natin dito sa gobyerno ng Pangulong Duterte file your cases file cases against uh, erring police officers file cases against government officials who will uh, who, who openly advocate a policy of killing in that manner you will see the international authorities and even the world will see that we are not letting people get away with murder. Kasi yun ang sinasabi nila kasi wala daw kaso or wala silang nakikitang government reaction or government action pertaining to the killings. Hindi rin natin pwedeng sabihin, pusher naman yan kaya okay lang mamatay sila. Hindi. Meron tinatawag na rule of law. At itong rule of law na ito ang magiging dahilan na gagamitin nila against our president. If we don't want our president to be removed, hindi dapat natin tinitiis ang mga killings that are conducted with measure of authority. Okay? So kung may authority such as police officers, government officials na nagko-conduct ng killings, then we have to move against them otherwise presidente natin ang mapapahama. Pa <coughs> sabi ni Lou Fahilan, pag lumalabas po ang mga government officials to that ni Nanatilianes, pwede ba nilang gamitin ang government funds para sa biyahe nila? That's actually a good question. Is this public in nature and is this pursuant to their job as public officials? Ako, I think that this is not their job and therefore we can question the use of funds for that. Uh, sabi ni Brian Santos, regular ka na po ba sa karambola? Opo, last week po po. Ay, last, last week po po. Regular in the sense na everyday, yes. Sabi ni Lady Wanto, no. In my own opinion, someone so powerful to ignite the ICC to timing the EJK issues against Tate to detour the Deng Vaksha issues. Hindi po. Uh, I disagree that there is anybody that powerful to be able to time this. The case or the complaints were filed last year. And it was really a matter of time before the ICC either opened it or really totally ignored it. I disagree and we should really stop thinking in terms of conspiracies because we lose sight of the big picture. If you dismiss the ICC case as merely a distraction to Deng Vaksha, you're missing the point. They're trying to remove our president. That is a more serious offense. This is not a distraction. This is an attempt to remove a duly elected president using false claims with an international tribunal. This is not a small thing. This is not a mere distraction. This is a blatant and very open attempt to remove our president. Stop thinking of it in terms of as distraction kasi pinagliliit ninyo yung problema. The problem is a little bigger than that. Senator Tillianes and all of these other people who filed their complaints with the, before the ICC have no evidence, have no reason to have gone to the international court. They are doing so because they want to remove our president. And they're doing that because, not just because they want to remove their president, but they want a return to the old order. Wag tayong pumayag niyan. So wag niyong mamaliitin to as a means simply to distract us from Deng Vaksha. That's a completely different thing altogether. Which doesn't mean to say that Deng Vaksha is a small problem. It's a big problem. And it's something that we have to address. But we have to start thinking in terms of multi-levels. Hindi lahat po ng problema natin ay pangtakip sa ibang problema. We have to start thinking of them as different problems and that we are capable of looking at many different problems and not being distracted. Diba? Kasi sinasabi nyo parati, distraction lang yan dun sa ganitong issue. Bakit? Hindi ba natin kayang bigyan ng padsin lahat ng mga issues na ito? Mahalaga ito lahat. Mahalaga yung, ano, yung worry natin na matatanggal ang ating Pangulo. Mahalaga ang worry natin na baka mamatay yung mga batang ininipsyonan ng Deng Vaksha. They can be dealt with as two separate issues. Stop thinking of them as distractions to each other. They'll, you'll make that problem look smaller. And it's not small. You know, somebody is lying to get our president out. Somebody is lying to protect Noy Noy Aquino. Are they related? Not necessarily. But we have to deal with them no matter what, even if they're not related. Sabi ni Tonyo Panagaw, dapat tutuloy yan ang JK. Uh, 
please no ano let's not advocate the use of violence against anybody even people that we hate alam mo kung bakit? Kasi tayo yung kakasuhan at tayo yung nagmumukhang masama. Alam niyo yung ginagamit ni Maria Reza na masyado tayong mean on social media. Okay lang yun kasi galit talaga tayo. Masama talaga yung loob natin. But it's a totally different thing when we start committing crimes. And, you know, getting asking people to commit acts of violence is actually a crime. So let's not do that. Kasi it affects the president. Nagmumukha ang pangulo natin na, da- na, na violent because his supporters are violent. So let's not do that to our president. Um, sabi ni Marco Plantilla, Madam, why not put out open disclaimers to all online bloggers just like movies? Anong disclaimers po? Sabi ni Nisan, okay, last two. Sabi ni Nisan, bakit sinasabi ng Rob Rebdo Camp na dinidelay nila ang recount? Si BBM daw nagdidelay ng recount. Of course, that's not true. Pero pinagmumukha nila kasi otherwise, it would be an admission on their part na sila yung nagde-delay. Simple lang yan. Okay, last. What is your stand on the Vaksha issue now? Weighing 1 to 10 chance. We don't do, alam mo, uh, as anybody who's an officer of the court, lawyers or participants in the justice system, we don't lay odds. We don't bet on court cases. I can tell you whether or not the evidence is strong. I think that the evidence of corruption is strong. We're waiting for evidence on the direct or indirect direct link of Deng Vaksha to the deaths. Last from Gil Emanuel. Regards to the ICC representative who's looking into President Duterte's case, is he going to examine the documents presented by Tulianis? No. The case that is presently before the, the prosecutor is the case filed by Sabio. Wala pa pong notice on the case filed by Tulianis and Alejano. So they're going to examine the documents only presented to determine whether or not the court already has jurisdiction. Uh, of course, it will also make inquiries or they will ask later on from the, the Republic kung merong... Um, Kung, kung meron masasabi ang Republic regarding the, the, the complaint. So we do get a chance to, to present uh, contrary documents. Uh, and let's have the final word from Billy Hufana. The opposition will never stop looking for a way to remove Duterte out of... Uh, looking for a way to remove Duterte out of office. Oh my goodness, na, nawala. So, yes, I agree with that statement that opposition will never stop. So that's why we should also never stop being informed and taking legal action or taking any action, legal action, uh, to prevent uh, to prevent our president from being removed, to prevent also the impression that our president is presiding over an, a, a country that has that is lawless. So if we advocate violence, it makes us look lawless and it makes our president, our leader, look like an advocate for that lawlessness. So, if they're not gonna stop, then we should also not gonna not stop. Okay? So, uh, ang tinitignan po ngayon dito ng, ng, international, ng international community is whether or not we are addressing the issue of EJ case. And we are because a case has been filed, two cases have been filed before the Supreme Court. So, doon pa lang, doon, at doon pa lang nakikita natin na magkakaproblema yung kaso na makalusot or tumuloy kasi ina-address po ng Philippine government yung issue of EJ case. So, but we would like to see more uh, more action uh, addressing this. So we also have to present the fact that, uh, that PNP Chief Bato has removed administratively so many police officers allegedly for administrative offenses pertaining to the war on drugs. So, kailangan lumabas din yan. Eh, mahalaga din po na nakikita na, na pinoprosecute natin ang mga polis na sa tingin natin ay involved either in the killings or in drugs themselves. Para nakikita din natin na some of these killings are, are justifiably committed by those who are involved in drugs. Meaning, it's not the government, it's somebody else. So, kailangan natin yung pakita yan. So, those of us who are worried, we can always take action on that. Um... Ayan. Uh, lastly, let's see who can have one more word on this. Sabi ni Rona Serna, and I like the hashtag, hashtag protect the president. So we can do live again, uh, possibly tomorrow. Um, yeah, because it's Saturday, so we do live on Saturdays anyway. Uh, thank you very much. For those who haven't shared or liked, uh, please do so right now. And uh, thank you very much for listening. I really have to go because I'm dami-dami Thank you for all the compliments on the hair. Um, 
And for everybody who says I look like Mocha, I'm taking that as a compliment. Thank you very much for, for watching. And thank you very much for those who have clicked like and follow. And please do for, don't forget to subscribe to Facebook Live on Luminous by Trixie Cruz Angles. For those watching on YouTube, please don't forget to do the same. Thank you very much and uh, I'll see you. And if you need uh, anything to be discussed on Facebook Live, just please send a PM or whenever I announce on Facebook Live, you can do so in the comment section. Thank you very much. Um, don't forget to share. I'll see you. Have a good day.